G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. This week I'm having a look at a set of chain strainers designed by Peter Barrett from Fenceline Solutions in Northern Victoria. These strainers I think are an example of past ideas brought together and then improved with new ideas to make an incrementally better product that I believe is a game changer. Now it might come as a surprise to find out that there's been over 350 patented, marketed and used wire strainers in Australia in the last hundred odd years. Out of all of those, there's been two that have really stood the test of time and have stood out as being some of the most popular and most widely used strainers on the market. They were both invented by New Zealanders. We've got the Hayes 108 chain strainer here, which I cut my teeth on when I was a young lad getting into the industry. And then we've got the Donald strainer up on the wire here. That was the sort of strainer that was really popular in the 50s and it's certainly the one that my father used. In fact, this is his. I'm gonna take you through the features of these two particularly popular strainers for a reason. I believe that the newer strainers that are on the market all in some way owe these two particular strainers a debt of gratitude for product development. And then we're going to have a look at the fence line model and see how it uses the best of both and brings in some whole new ideas of its own to make this chain strainer truly a game changer. <laughs> Donald strainers were spectacularly simple. A central lever that adjusts two claws on one side and one anchor claw on the other to walk the jaws up the wire. The jaws themselves were very cleverly designed. There's a trigger mechanism with a point of balance that locks it open. Slide the wire in and snap the trigger shut. You don't ever have to put your fingers near where the jaws and the wires connect. Now there's always been a couple of inherent problems with these strainers. The first is, because they're so short from one end to the other, as soon as you start straining, this bends the wire out and actually pulls the wire out of these straining jaws. Which means you have to cut the wire before you start straining. You can't have a loop of wire build up during the straining process. That's a little bit of a safety issue because you've got bits of loose wire flapping around right near where you're operating. If they did happen to let go, you're gonna have sharp objects whipping past you. Another issue with these strainers was the fact that as the jaws walked up the wire, you were having a new contact point and a new bend initiated in the wire each time that happened. And this was not so much of an issue with plain wire, but with modern high tensile wire that's got a coating on it to protect against rust, what you're actually doing is you're removing sometimes many, many centimetres of coating if you use strainers like this. One thing I will say for them though, is if you've got to fit some strainers into a set of saddlebags, and you're only working on say Iowa Barb, a set of Donald strainers might be a really good investment, because man, these things pack up small. Now all of that brings us to the next strainers, the Hayes 108, or the Hayes Smooth Grip Strainer. Now installing the Hayes 108 strainer is a little bit more of a process. Because it's two part, I tend to put the chain end on first, give the jaws a good squeeze and pull to make sure that it's holding onto the wire. Then while you're maintaining tension on the chain, install the jaws on your handpiece and engage the second locking cam. Now, that's a bit of a process, but the fact that you're using the chain to walk up means that unlike the Donald strainers, these strainers don't have to move on the wire. So you're not abrading the wire or taking any coating off the wire as you use them. There's been a flood of copies come onto the market. Some of these copies are not very well made at all, and they feature pins that aren't particularly high tensile. They feature construction methods that are a little bit unsound. And quite frankly, for the saving of 20 or $30, why would you bother? One thing I will point out, because I haven't used this set of strainers, it's still there, is that most of this style, the Hay style strainer, always has a spring between the jaws. Now, unfortunately, I mean, that's designed to be there as a bit of a safety feature, I suppose, and to help it walk up the wire. 
but I find that it's much harder to actually get the chain onto the strainers and to start straining and I find that often what happens is the chain balls up in this area here and creates an obstruction while you're trying to strain the wire. So I know myself and a lot of people tend to cut the spring off because we just don't use it and it makes the job much quicker for us. The only downside of that is that if you've cut, you've got to have your hand on the straining mechanism while you wind it up. And obviously, the more you have your hands in contact with the wire under tension or the straining mechanism under tension, the more chance there is for an injury to occur. So imagine if there was a solution to this. Well, there is. Now, I'm not knocking the hay strainers. These have been my go-to kit strainers for probably better part of 30 years. And I still trust them and believe in them, think they're a good product. But I really do now think it's time to move on. The love affair has ended. In terms of daily go-to strainers, I think I've found a new love. Let's put these fence line strainers through their paces, check out a few of the features that have been taken from strainers of the past, and look at a couple of new features that are included in this that I think that make these a game changer. We start out like the haze strainers, attaching the chain end, but there's a simple trigger mechanism not found in the haze that was only found on the Donald strainers, which means you don't have to get your fingers into the jaws at all. There is a very solid swivel mechanism here with all replaceable parts. You don't have to throw them away. You can just replace a screw or a nut. Moving on down, we've got an extra long chain. In fact, there is so much chain here. If you run out of chain while you're straining, you're not doing it right. And have you ever been frustrated by your current strainers? Because as soon as you get this end on, if you don't maintain tension, they fall off. These are spring loaded. That's not gonna happen. Attaching your straining levers can't be made easier because once again, just like the Donald strainers, we've got a trigger mechanism and you don't have to get your hands in the way. All you have to do is pick up your chain, put it over where you want it to join, pull the trigger, and the jaws come out of the way, allowing you to attach it easily. Now, unlike the Donald strainers, with this design, you actually leave the chain looped over the top of the strainers and there's a little groove for it to run in. That means it's not going to bunch up between the jaws and throw the chain off like can sometimes happen with the cheaper competition. These are truly single-handed strainers. You don't have to touch the mechanism or the chain at all. That's an absolute boon for OHS. In this day and age where you can get sued by your employee if they get sunburned, no one's going to want their employees' hands around chain or strained wire. With these strainers here, with the spring-loaded tines, there is absolute confidence that they're going to work every time. The chain's not going to get tangled. There is no reason for anyone to have their hands in the way. If you employ people to strain wire, you've got to get a set of these. Now we're up the business end. There's yet another swivel. So we've got two swivels, which means that there's no way that this chain can ever twist on you. And this swivel is attached to a tensiometer. This will actually tell you what tension you're straining the wire to within a reasonable margin of error. So if you've bothered to read your wire tag and want to strain the wire to its optimal tension, there's no need for an extra set of gear to measure the wire tension. These strainers do it for you. We've got automatically marked 1.3, 1.8 and 2.2 kilonewtons, which is the straining tension for most popular types of wire. Then we've got our third set of trigger mechanisms. So once again, pull the trigger, attach to the wire, let go. There is no need to touch the wire or the mechanism in any way, lowering the risk of injury and operator error. Now that we're set up, straining up the wire, as I mentioned earlier, is an easy, single-handed operation. The neat, flat profile of these strainers also mean that doing a knot behind it, such as the Donald knot, is not a drama. The trigger's not going to get in the way. Doing your Tex Brown or your version of a figure eight somewhere around here is not going to be a problem because there's no real parts to get in the way. And using any kind of straining device in between the jaws is also going to be super easy with really only the chain in the way. Now remember our dilemma of straining to the post? With the old style of haze, you could either wrap this around 
and bend your straining jaws, making them difficult to use in the future. Or with the later Hayes, and certainly with the cheapo models, you could use the hook on the chain, but then you'd end up with this sort of weight hanging at the other end of the chain, making it difficult to operate your strainers. Well, fence line have a solution for that as well. The chain end of the fence line solution strainers has this nifty little hook built in just behind your straining jaws. Attaching these to your post using that hook is dead set simple. All you have to do is go around the post, then locate the hook onto the chain, leaving your weighted strainer over the top of the chain. The hook's so secure that you can even put it down once it's on the post and it won't come apart. Then simply attach your strainers to the chain, locate the chain over the top of the strainers, and then strain up your wire as you would normally. Straining off a post has never been easier than with these strainers. The pleasant surprise with these new strainers is using them to strain up ring lock or hinge joint. In the past, the old hay strainer chain just wasn't long enough to cope with the amount of take up in the mesh. The new strainers with their extra long chain overcome that problem. They also get rid of the problem of this part of the strainers getting in the way while you're mucking around up near the strainer plate. With the new strainers, not only is it super easy to connect your chain to the post, when you get up the other end, you'll notice this hole in the anvil of the strainers. That makes it super easy to connect to your strainer plate. Then, with one-handed operation, you're underway and you start straining up your sheep mesh. So I think for me, the most surprising part about this review is not only the fact that I've now got a set of chain strainers that makes straining sheep mesh easy, I've also got a set of strainers that I reckon for the first time ever can truly do every fence straining job on the farm easily, safely and reliably with a measurable tensiometer. So needless to say, I'm incredibly impressed with this Australian designed, manufactured and marketed product. And the fence line strainers are up there with all of the other professional strainers that I've tried in the past. They just make the job so much easier and so much more reliable. Sure, you can buy $50 cheap strainers, but you'll probably injure yourself, they'll break after a little while, and you'll get substandard results with them slipping on the wire. For my money, invest in proper quality tools from the beginning, and you can't help but enjoy your work and do a better job. And hey guys, don't forget, if you like this video, hit the little subscribe button down there, give us a thumbs up, and check out this and all the other amazing products that I review on timthompson.ag.